Okay, can you can you see my PPT? Yes. Okay. okay. Ah. Uh, mm, uh, my topic is uh, Atlanta exit dislocation and circuit deformity. Uh, specifically about the quantitative correction of the um, dislocation, especially those with baseline variation. With the increasing uh, with increasing understanding of spinal deformity, I think we should merge those knowledge with our clinical practice on craniovertebral trunk deformity. Most importantly, quantitative correction of C1, C2 dislocation will let us from empirical to logistical treatment as happening in thoracic and lumbar deformity surgery. So uh, my presentation includes three aspects of why cervical deformity happens after C1, C2 surgery and how to correct a C1, C2 dislocation quantitatively. And finally, I'd like to share my own but immature view on craniovertebral defo deformity classification. As uh, our, primer, our, our primary goal to treat the uh, Atlanta exit dis dislocation and baseline variation is due to decompression. Now let's see this case. After surgery, after surgery, what happened in the cervical spine? So even though we have, a, uh, we, we have got a good decompression, but subaxial kyphosis happened. So we also, we also should pay special attention on the central alignment of the cervical spine it, uh, besides the decompression. So this is a picture published in European Spine Journal several years ago. The authors wanted to show us that after uh, show us the disc the disc change after correction of a C1 C2 dislocation, but actually what what we can see here after correction of the cranial vertebral junction angle from 110 degrees to 107, uh, 157 degrees, nearly the normal value. What we found is that the cervical spine become kyphotic. So why this happened? Now in uh, our previous study did, uh, uh, conducted by Dr. Liu, he divided the clival and axial angle into two parts. The upper one, the upper part, the upper part, uh, of course divided by the cham uh, chamberlain's line. The, the other part, we named that clival tilt. And anatomically, this is a fixed. It, that, that means constant. But we can see here, Amount uh, between the between between basal imagination patients and the normal the normal population, there's about a 15 degrees difference. So that's very important. And the, the and the lower part of this of the of this angle, we named it axial tilt. So normally the axial tilt is about 94 degrees. So please remember, if we if so, if we correct the angle, the cranial vertebral junction angle, we, we name it as CXA, to 160 degrees as a normal reference, we actually overacted, overcorrected axial tilt to compensate decreased clival tilt. So this is the reason why postoperative lordosis happened. Actually, besides the uh, hypothesis in clinical practice, uh, the overall dosis is also a very common. Is very common. So both overall dosis and the kyphosis will deteriorate uh, quality of life. Furthermore, overall dosis will cause dysphagia in some severe patient, even dyspnea. That means air destruction immediately after the after extubation. 
Additionally, uh, the, uh, the, the change of uh, cardiovascular junction angle will exhibit the degeneration of disc in the uh, cervical spine. And uh, here is a study that means uh, besides the, the impact on, on the range of motion in the subaxial cervical spine, after fixation of C12, the disc pressure, the intradisc pressure also, also changes. The most probably this will accelerate the disc degeneration. So here raises the question how much reduction of the atlantal axial dislocation should be correct, especially for patients with the basic inflammation. Okay. For example, for in normal in, in patients without basic inflammation, for example, also totoidum, maybe we can correct this angle to its normal value about 160 degrees. But what but what about this patient? So here I suggest two ways to correct the uh, to correct the this dislocation using local measurement or global measurement. Very very two ways. Very simple. Very simple two ways. In a previous study also conducted by Dr. Liu, he deduced geometrically that the change of Cranial vertebral junction angle, we named that CXA, equals to the change of cervical lordosis. So this, please, please remember this formula. It will be used. It, it, we will use that data. So let's see this this patient with basal imagination. What uh, as as we mentioned as I mentioned before. What we can change is only the axial tilt. For this patient, actually the, the axial tilt was about 50, 55 degrees. So if we correct this angle to its normal about, about 94 degrees, that means we, we can change the change the cranial junction about uh, by 39 degrees. So finally, the ideal the ideal uh, angle of uh, of CXA will be about one hundred thirty nine degrees. So how about the uh, how about the subaxial curvature? As you remember, the delta delta CXA equal equals equals to the change of CL CL right. So we can deduce. The cervical, the cervical culture will be 11 degrees. It seems good according to our normal experience, uh, about, uh, according to our normal knowledge, right? Now, that's a very simple way. Uh. Now, here's another way I'd like to present it to you. Uh. Uh, according to a study by the International Spine Study Group, between cervical doses and T1 slope, there's a constant relationship. About, about 16.5 degrees difference, regardless of the, uh, the curvature of the risk and the lumbar spine. So this is a very important value for us. So let's see again this patient. His T1 slope was about 22 degrees. So according to that, uh, according to the formula, cervical, the ideal cervical lordosis will be 22 degrees minus 16.5 uh, degrees. That means about finally, the ideal cervical lordosis will be about 5.5 degrees. So the the change of cervical doses about is about uh, will be about 44 five degrees, and so the final CXA will be about 144 
for 0.5 degrees. So that means uh, so that means we have to change the change this angle about 40 de 44 uh, 44 degrees. Uh, this is another way, a little a little bit complicated, but also very practical. But my question is how uh, these two ways how uh, can we emerge them together? I think we need more details to come to conform. Now, finally, let's see the classification. This is published several years ago in the GS spine. The authors divide the uh, cervical, uh, cervical deformity into several types, and the cranial vertebral junction deformity is a unique one. But let's see the, the modifiers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except uh, uh, besides the C1, C2, C2, SV, horizontal gaze, a cervical dosis minus T1 slope. Uh, can you see so how important the C1 dosis my, minus T1 slope and myelopathy? Very spe specifically, the authors included also the SIR swap class classification of uh, lumbar pelvic parameters. So here we uh, raise some questions that really my, this is my view and uh, I think, is it essential to include lumbar pelvic parameters? Should head position be included? I think yes, we should include head position because it is a cranial vertebral junction deformity classification. And should rotation and the tachycolis be included? Yes, I think. I think yes, we, we should include them. So which measurements among many, many parameters are indispensable? In terms of a clinical practice, how, how about proceed the measurement based on CT? CT is much more uh, precise than X ray. Uh, then, how about the compensation mechanism? So, I think we um, all, of, all, of, all of above mentioned we should consider again. As we all know, his example, the basically uh, the cranial vertebral junction is much more complicated than a simple set of imbalance. And also we should think about the compensation as published in, in, the, in this article. T1 slope could be impacted not only by a thoracic and a lumbar deformity, but also by cervical deformity as a part of a compensation. Finally, as I, as I talked that now in the literature, there are too many parameters. Uh, which one is much more critical or indispensable, especially for a clinical, uh, from a clinical point of view? So in summary, a, qu a quantitative correction of atlantal axial dislocation, with, especially those with basal variation, is possible based on parameters measured using different approaches. Integrating of the existing parameters and looking for a pragmatic and a simple way to guide a survey would be helpful. And then finally, a new classification focusing on cranial vertebral junction specifically might be useful to guide for guide our daily work and research. Thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Jian. Uh, any questions? Hello. Hello. Hey. Yes. Hello, Hi. Yeah. Please. Congratulations. This was this was really a awesome presentation. Oh, thank um, you. We revised our cases also and presenting in Global Spine in Toronto, and it's very clear that there is a link. What what you do at uh, C0, C1, C2, and subaxial spine. So mo most of our operations at uh, C0, C1, C2 tend to be kyphotic surgeries. <coughs> Whereas the, the on, on subaxial spine, you tend to induce lordosis. So that's what we do. That's uh, the stage we are. Um, 
And this is an important topic because in Basel imagination and uh, our friends from Brazil look at it into that and they show that all patients with basal invagination had a, a, a reduced uh, clival cervical angle, clival canal angle. So in a way, uh, basal invagination is a kyphotic problem. And with our surgeries, we are inducing more kyphosis. So I don't know what's, this is a, an important problem. What's your take on this? Yeah, uh, uh, actually, we uh, we uh, paid attention of this problem several years ago. You know, initially we have we had some patients of post-operative dysphagia because of the overcorrection of the cranial vertebral junction angle. So most of the patient actually had post-operative overlordosis of the cervical spine. So. At the point we tried to look, uh, try to find the resolution. So finally, we we f we found that the cranial uh, the, the CXA is uh, was the important factor, and that uh, I think that study we have already published in the World Journal of Neurosurgery. Huh? So after that, we changed our strategy, and after that, we have uh, we had no. Cases of postoperative dysphagia. Actually, in patients of uh, baseline vaccination, it's very rare of post uh, of uh, uh, post operative kyphosis in our cases. Uh, I think most uh, um, very often it happens. Uh, it happens because of, uh, the kyphosis the kyphosis happens because of the a patient position during a surgery, usually, usually we put the patient in a prone position. For a convenience of surgery, usually we uh, mm, flex that, uh, we, uh, we put the pa patient's cervical spine in a, in a, in a, in a flexation, so in convenience of, ex of surgery exposure. So I think that's the main reason of post-operative kyphosis. So yes, after, but, if you pay special attention to this, I think we can avoid that. Yeah, I, I, I agree on I agree with that. But whenever you apply distraction, C1, C2, posterior screws, distraction, you always induce a little bit of kyphosis. Yeah, we also, yeah, this is a very important point. Uh, initially, we used the midfield, uh, midfield frame to fix the patient height. This is a, so, uh, but now we, um, but now we uh, we we use the cervical traction because the cervical traction is very useful to maintain the cervical uh, the, the, the cervical alignment during surgery, and will help also help to correct the dislocation. Yeah, agreed. So any other question? I thought again, I have a question about the, the, your, your measure of the, the spin. I think it's very useful for us to to correct the, the, the C1, C2 dislocation. But how how can I to control the, the, the angle degree in the operation? For example, I, I want to increase the uh, uh, C, uh, CXA angle, increase the 40 or, or or fifty or, or, or thirty uh, degree, how can it do in, in the in the operation? Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a very good question. Um, I think we uh, actually, as as you see, in clinically, it's very difficult to control the exact degrees. It's very difficult to control. Mm -hmm. But at least I think, as a study, at least theoretically. We should have some precise uh, uh, exact measurement. This is what uh, what this is what I think. At least theoretically, we should be very precise. Mm -hmm. Maybe we, we can uh, yeah, we, we can control the the the, the high, high, high height of the, the cage to to control the angle to control the the the. the no 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 no. Maybe. That's very that's. There's another way. There's another way. I think maybe, uh, but uh, 
I think with more and more uh, with more use of interoperative CT to precise control the angulation is possible. Okay, uh, including the uh, the uh, including use the cage. Okay.